Salut à tous et bienvenue sur la chaîne Alors je suis vraiment trop contente de vous retrouver aujourd'hui pour poursuivre notre thème de Noël à New York avec une vidéo spéciale, notre première collaboration avec l'équipe. On s'est dit que c'était vraiment l'occasion parfaite pour convier un artiste sur la chaîne et pas des moindres, vous allez voir, il s'appelle Gavin Snyder, il est new-yorkais, il est artiste spécialisé en urban sketching à l'aquarelle, un thème que vous nous demandez souvent d'explorer. De, Alors vous allez voir, Gavin, il est vraiment pro sur ce thème, il va vous emmener dans les lieux emblématiques de New York pendant Noël et il va répondre à des questions, il va nous expliquer un petit peu son processus créatif donc j'espère vraiment que ce format va vous plaire n'oubliez pas d'activer les sous-titrages et je vous laisse tout de suite avec Gavin Hi, I'm Gavin Snyder I'm an artist who lives in New York and is originally from Kansas I've been drawing and painting my whole life I was probably three years old Um, when my parents brought my brother Grant and I an easel and we would pick up crayons, markers, pencils and just sit on either end of this easel and create imaginary worlds. The things that, you know, really interest a three or four year old kid. Dinosaurs, asteroids, rocket ships, aliens. I remember a lot of fire and, and a lot of spaceships from these early drawings. And since then, You know, what I've drawn and what I've painted has changed a lot, but I've always been painting and always been drawing and always been creating art. I think, you know, when I was maybe a sixth grader, seventh grader, I was really interested in designing football cards and, and sneakers and, you know, jerseys. Um, you know, I got into high school and I, I wanted to create these like hyper realistic pencil drawings, uh, portraits of musicians portraits of football players, again, almost photographic in nature. And then I got to architecture school at the University of Kansas, and I was drawing so much for school that I really kind of burnt myself out on, you know, drawing for, for myself and drawing for fun. And I really had to circle back around to find it. And how I did that was going back to those childhood things that inspired me, the silly, you know, monsters, dinosaurs, asteroids, and I incorporated them into uh, concert posters for my band and for other bands um, in, you know, in, in the area. And that kind of inspired me again. Then, eventually found my way back to, uh, to drawing buildings for fun, drawing streetscapes, cityscapes, people, drawing landscapes, and really, you know, being, being more comfortable with that and going out in the world and experiencing things and just drawing exactly what I saw. So, yeah, I, I've really been, been creating artwork my whole life. Uh, my first tip for urban sketching would be don't be afraid to go straight to the final artwork. I found, and I guess all these tips are things that work for me, don't necessarily have to work for you, but When I don't put any guidelines down or any pencil lines down, when I go straight from the palette to the paper, that my paintings have a sense of life and a sense of energy that really doesn't get captured if I sort of plan everything out. Um, sometimes the thing you thought you were going to paint doesn't even fit on the page and you end up painting a completely different scene entirely. But I think that opportunity to allow for energy and the lines get a little bit shaky or squiggly or, you know, run off the page in some way, um, really often results in a better final artwork um, than if you had planned everything out to the last detail. My second tip for urban sketching would be to focus on the negative space. Use the white of the page as another color in your palette, and really as maybe the most important color in your palette. Our eye is naturally drawn to white space and You can use the white of the paper, if you plan it correctly, to make a streetlight glow, or, you know, shake the clouds in the sky, or make a window stand out. Um, as much as, as the darkest darks are important in the final sketch and, and, and the final composition, the white of the page is, is so crucial to creating a drawing with, with depth and with energy. Uh, my third tip for urban sketching would be to approach a complex scene with a limited palette. If you can just focus on the light 
and dark and motion, the detail of the scene will be conveyed and all the elements of the painting will add up to create that detail. Um, I had a professor who taught a sketch class to me in architecture school who said something I really liked. He said, if you draw the wrong line, draw the right line next to it. And I try to remember that when I'm you know, trying to perfect a painting that it's not necessarily about perfection. It's about um, energy and conveying that energy through line and through color. And it's much easier to do that with a limiter, limited palette. What I see when I look at this painting is um, I really, really see how much fun I had painting the um, ice skaters and their shadows and even the line of orange cones. Uh, by that point, I was almost euphoric, just A, to be done and out of the cold, and B, to be really capturing what the life of the scene was. Um, the last thing I painted, and the thing that really completed the painting for me and, and, and you know sort of convinced me I was done, was the shadows on the ice with this sort of um, gray-blue that were cast by the, the people ice skating and by the um, circle of cones. Uh, as soon as I hit those shadows, and um, you know, got a little bit of that that depth and that that shape of the ice. I knew I was done, and I was happy with the painting. So I'm going to share four paintings from Grand Central Terminal, all done uh, probably a year apart, roughly. Um, it's one of my favorite places to paint around the holidays, just to stand on the balcony and look at the crowd over the main concourse. The first painting I'm gonna share is done in ink and marker, so debatably, debatably a painting, um, but it was shown during Christmas time, um, right before, maybe a week before Christmas, and I really used a limited palette. I used gray, I used um, a blue-green for the ceiling, I used red, for the people's coats and Christmas wreaths. I really like the way this very tall, narrow sketchbook um, sort of created, sort of framed the scene and created a really interesting linear composition from the ceiling all the way down to the steps that I was standing on and just really the whole length of this really incredible space. It's also fun because the sketchbook that I did the uh, painting on or the drawing on was actually um, designed by my brother Grant as part of his uh, first book release, uh, Sketchbooks of the Pros, and features one of his comics on the cover of it. So, that was a really fun Christmas painting. The second painting I'll share from Grand Central was also done in ink and marker on a sketchbook, and really uh, focused on a different area, really just focused on the people I was absolutely not bored because I was waiting. I think I was waiting to catch a train, um, maybe waiting for a meeting. I don't remember what I was waiting for. I think that's the fun thing about going back to a scene more than once is you don't have to capture everything. You know, The second time you come back, you can kind of take a more limited view and really focus in on a detail or something you may have missed the first time. And that's why here you barely even see the ticket booth in the top corner, um, you really just yeah, focus on the activity and the life of the people moving through the space. It's uh, really fun to draw big puffy people with tiny little legs. <laughs> That's one of the best human forms we, we can achieve as an artist. This one actually, you know, one of the things I talk about um, creating constraints or providing some sort of discomfort when you're creating art and how that can actually result in, in progress is this was done in colored pencil. You know, it, it really was fun. Um, to approach the same scene with a different media. You know, I'm still focused on the coats and the colors and the people, but also now like kind of can get the warm glow of the lights. A lot of the colors that you actually see coming through in the, um, in the sketch are made of multiple pencils. Um, like this is sort of a purplish blue and a teal blue overlapping one another. This is, two, this is a color of orange and yellow creating this glow. I remember, you know, um, a friend of mine who gave me some really great watercolor tutorials at, at an early stage when I was first learning to watercolor taught me that you never use the 
color black and watercolor, all shadows are created from other colors. And I kind of tried to use that same approach, that same tactic with colored pencil here. This is the most recent of the Grand Central pieces I'm gonna share. This one was really fun because as I had visited the terminal, you know, multiple times to paint, I would never actually, I, I'm using the word paint here, I'd never actually painted. I had always, you know, drawn with pencils, pens, ink, marker. Um, and this was the first watercolor I had attempted there. And the gold, the glow, the way the, the way the terminal just glows gold and the interiors from all the beautiful stone and the soft light was really perfect for watercolor. I try not to draw a person, I try to draw a shape. It's really hard when you focus on the entirety of a person, you know, to actually like have the time, uh, you know, to, to paint that. I And I try to use like, you know, again, use negative space. Like this is just the lines of legs and maybe a couple shadows on the armpits and like, you know, hair, um, or sometimes they're a full, um, you know, almost silhouette of a person. Other times, you know, I'll just have a shoe and then later I'll add a, a, a leg or two and, and a brush stroke that's hair. Um, so it's really about, yeah, focusing on the shapes that are created by the people, um, the lights and the darks, and not actually trying to draw a person. I think that's really important for me to like separate myself from that. And up here, they're really just, you know, two quick strokes and a dot for the head. Um, these people up here on the balcony. I've lived in New York for six years now and still can't even comprehend how big and how vast it is. There's everything here. There's beaches, there's mountains, there's every sort of building and neighborhood you could possibly hope to draw or see. You know, one thing I didn't expect when I moved to New York from Kansas was that a large part of my art and the art I would create would revolve around the people and the people I meet. You know, when you're out on the, on the street sketching or painting, people really do feel connected and they feel like, you know, they want to come up and, and talk to you for a while. And, you know, one surprising and unexpected thing that's that's happens so often is that people, when they see you making art, they want to share the kind of art they create, tell you what they painted, tell you, you know, their experience with um, oils or watercolors, or, you know, maybe it's their daughter who paints, maybe they can't even draw a stick figure is, you know, sort of the refrain I always get. But it really opens up this sort of, uh, I guess, this connection we all have that, you know, we all are taking things in and, and wanting to to express ourselves or put it back out in the world in a new and creative way. And I think that's been the most exciting thing about New York for me is those small interactions, um, those people I meet on the street. And so now beyond just going somewhere and painting and um, you know capturing the scene, it's about having an experience and about you know creating a memory and about you know meeting people and being inspired by them. And I've tried to write about the things I experience as much as painting and made that almost as much of a part of the urban sketching as the painting itself, um, the written experience of, of, you know, creating that piece of art. When I'm on site painting, I do try to, in a very um, sort of covert way, take notes on what people are saying around me, conversations I overhear, you know, stories people tell me when they come up to talk. And then I let it sit for a while. And then oftentimes the next morning after I've created the painting, I'll sit down at my desk at home and, or, you know, get on my phone while I'm still in bed and just uh, write about my experience, what I remember, you know, what the light felt like, uh, who I met, what I heard, um, the sounds, the smells, the things that, um, you know, I want the painting to convey, um, but also that I might forget if I don't, you know, create a document of it there. So really that, that painting and the writing that accompanies it become a document of the city. 
and really a document of an experience. And I became very attached to the paintings because I remember, you know, who I was talking to, what I did, who I met when I was there, and what that experience was like, whether it was good or bad. Sometimes it's really bad, sometimes it's really uncomfortable, and it's really rewarding, and I really love it. If I had one piece of advice, uh, I think I'd go back to a silly phrase I wrote on my Twitter bio like 10 years ago, which is get up and draw the things you believe in. And I don't know what other people take from that, but what it means to me is to share and create artwork about things that you're excited about and passionate about. I think that if you're passionate about something and you're excited about the work you're creating, That'll, that'll show through and other people will respond to that in a really positive way. Uh, we really like to see people share what they love. And I think that, you know, at its best, uh, painting allows for us to do that and creating art allows for us to do that. And that's maybe the most important piece of advice I could give. Voilà, j'espère que ce format vous a plu, j'espère que vous avez aimé découvrir la ville de New York euh, pendant la période de Noël, vous avez vu c'est vraiment magique, donc j'espère que vous avez aimé vous téléporter avec nous euh, à New York et que ça vous a inspiré de découvrir bah, l'univers de nouvelles artistes, donc dites nous si ce format vous a plu, si c'est le cas n'hésitez pas à nous laisser un petit pouce en l'air et à vous abonner à la chaîne pour ne pas rater les prochaines vidéos. En tout cas, moi, je remercie vraiment Gavin d'avoir participé à ce projet et je vous dis à la prochaine. Salut